It doesn't seem possible that a player as good as De'Aaron Fox is can be underrated. And yet, that's the case. We're looking at the top 30 point guard rankings in the NBA, where De'Aaron Fox falls on that list, plus the undeniable status that I feel Fox needs to achieve this season. It's all right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings. Your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all offseason long. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports anchor and reporter for ABC 10 News, and we're going to be going over the next few episodes The Hoops Hype Rankings. They have the top 30 point guards, top 30 for every single position. We're going to be focusing on every single position. We're starting with De'Aaron Fox and the point guards today. We'll look at DeMontis Sabonis. We'll look at where Keegan Murray falls in terms of uh, of small forwards. We'll look at the shooting guard position to see if Malik Monk cracked that list. We're going to have some fun with these rankings. Going into these rankings, I'm, I'm expecting to more often than not be a little disappointed or or bothered by where these players end up and and sure enough when seeing the top 30 point guard records involving uh, or uh, rankings involving DeAaron Fox I was not I wasn't angry necessarily I wasn't too pleased with where Fox landed and more specifically which point guards were ahead of DeAaron Fox because putting myself in the mindset of national media members that are that are making these lists like I understand why the, these players are being put ahead of De'Aaron Fox even if I fundamentally disagree with them so we're going to go through uh this point guard uh ranking from hoops hype here and, and look at where De'Aaron Fox is at he's at nine right so he's the ninth ranked point guard in all the NBA according to hoops hype now before we get into who the top eight are who's ahead of him let's talk about some noticeable names that are below him on this ranking. You have Trey Young, who's ranked at 10. I completely agree with that. I think De'Aaron Fox is a better point guard and a better overall player than Trey Young. Trey Young's a phenomenal shooter, but we know things aren't necessarily working out and haven't been working out with him uh, in, in Atlanta. De'Aaron Fox, significantly better defender. De'Aaron Fox, overall, just better offensive player. Uh, Trey Young, a better passer for sure. But De'Aaron Fox is a better player than Trey Young, but I'm okay with there not being a massive gap between the two, but I agree with Fox being ahead of him. De'Aaron Fox ahead of Kyrie Irving. I think Kyrie Irving was 11 or 12 uh, on this list, which I, I was a little surprised by, considering that Kyrie is still one of the most prolific point guards and ball handlers uh, in the NBA. I absolutely, at this point in their careers, I would choose De'Aaron Fox over Kyrie Irving if I had a choice between the two to add on my team, so I agree with it in that sense. I actually think Kyrie Irving is hurt on this ranking list by where Luka Doncic ended up, and we'll we'll get to that in just a second. And then De'Aaron Fox ahead of Jamal Murray. Now this I do agree with. Jamal Murray is going to get the vote in terms of massive big game moments, right? Jamal Murray is unbelievable in big moments in the playoffs for the Denver Nuggets. But in terms of overall better point guard and overall better basketball player, De'Aaron Fox is a better basketball player than Jamal Murray. So those were the those were the noticeable names that I thought that De'Aaron Fox was ranked ahead of. And I was pleased to see that he at least got some love over these these players. The top three on this ranking list are not surprising at all. I mentioned Luka earlier. He's number one. That might have an impact on why Kyrie Irving is down at 11 or 12 because Kyrie plays, I guess, more of a two, even though Luka Doncic is a a one that is the size of a three or four. So 
we're going into, of course, more positionless basketball in the modern NBA. So these rankings are are a little more blurred than they've been in the past. That being said, you can't have two top 10 point guards on the same team. They are great ball handlers. They both have found a way to mesh together and work together when I initially didn't think that that was going to work out. But Luka Doncic being the number one ranked point guard in the NBA, I get it. I understand it, so I really don't have an issue with it. Number two, Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Number three, Jalen Brunson. These are two guys that you've heard me talk about and compare with De'Aaron Fox a lot, especially this offseason, right? Because what they are for their respective teams is what I believe De'Aaron Fox is for the Sacramento Kings. But nationally, he's not viewed as the same, right? De'Aaron Fox and Shea Gilgis-Alexander are very, very similar players. Very similar. So the idea that there is a gap from two to nine, there is a uh, an eight player gap between the two, I think is or is seven player, eight, whatever. The fact that there's that big of a gap between Shea Gilgis Alexander and De'Aaron Fox on these rankings has everything to do with perspective and not to actually do with substance. Because I'm okay with saying Shea Gilgis Alexander is a better player than De'Aaron Fox based off of the success that he's had with Oklahoma City last season, the numbers that he's put up, what he's done on the playoff stage. Like, I'm okay with it. But the gap should not be that big. It's kind of the same thing with Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson exploded onto the scene last season. He, he's had good season before that, but last season he really, like, boomed in New York, right? And then they get to the playoffs, and he was phenomenal uh, in the playoffs for the Knicks as well. Jalen Brunson and De'Aaron Fox, in my opinion, are very similar players. What might be the biggest difference that Brunson has in his favor that Fox hasn't necessarily shown enough yet is that chip on their shoulder, killer mindset, nobody is going to stop me. We've seen elements of that with De'Aaron Fox, right? How many times have we talked about, man, if you piss off De'Aaron Fox, like, look out. And we saw De'Aaron Fox in his playoff debut against the Golden State Warriors, Game 1 in Sacramento a couple years ago, drop 38 points, which was one of the best scoring performances in their playoff debut in the history of the NBA. So we know Fox is capable of doing it. But again, national perspective, when these rankings come into play, they view Jalen Brunson as far beyond De'Aaron Fox because of the moments, when in actuality... Those two players, like Fox and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, are not that far far apart. I am okay with both those players being ranked ahead of De'Aaron Fox. I'm okay with it. But I don't think the gap should be as big as these rankings suggest. But what about number four through number eight? Are you okay, Matt, with any of those guys being ahead? I'm okay with one of those guys being ahead of De'Aaron Fox, and that's Steph Curry. Yeah, Steph Curry is, to me, even with Steph Curry getting older, Steph Curry should be st- top three. He's still one of the best point guards, period. Period. And he has shown no reason to believe otherwise. He's unbelievable. And if we're judging based off of team success last season, I'm sure as hell not putting that on Steph Curry, who did everything that he could. That being said, Steph Curry's not even ranked number four. Number four is Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton ranked number four. Now, I don't I don't want to turn this... This is not going to turn into a bash on Tyrese Halliburton Fest because I, I love the dude. Like, I love Tyrese. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the short time that I was able to cover him here in Sacramento. I'm absolutely rooting for the guy as much as I possibly can, right? Huge fan of Tyrese Halliburton. Absolutely will continue to support Tyrese Halliburton throughout his career. Tyrese Halliburton is overhyped. And it's his passing ability specifically that's overhyped. He's a great basketball player. Absolutely an all-star. Absolutely a star. Deserves to be in the top 10 on this list. 100%. Tyrese Halliburton is not a better point guard than De'Aaron Fox is. He's a better passer and playmaker than De'Aaron Fox is. He's not a better scorer. They nearly have identical three-point shooting. De'Aaron Fox, much more crafty as a three-level scorer than Tyrese Halliburton is. And Tyrese Halliburton can't hold a candle to what De'Aaron Fox can do defensively. De'Aaron Fox is a better basketball player than Tyrese Halliburton is, and I have no issue saying that today. There should not be a gap between four and nine between Tyrese and De'Aaron Fox. Halliburton has the benefit of hype, of playing in the East, and of the playoff run that he went on. I give him credit, and I give the Pacers credit for that run. Congratulations to them. I'm not going to put a but on top of that. 
They absolutely deserve the attention and the praise that they got for the season that they had last year and the playoff run that they went on, regardless of what teams they played and who was injured and who wasn't. They went on a good playoff run. But those results are skewing our image of, or this image of Tyrese Halliburton in comparison to De'Aaron Fox. Because the, one, Tyrese is definitely not four or five guards better than Fox is on a rankings list. Because two, Tyrese Halliburton is not a better guard and not a better player than De'Aaron Fox is. Number six is Tyrese Maxey. Over the last two seasons, Fox is a better scorer, a better rebounder, a better assister, and a better defender than Tyrese Maxey is. Once again, Maxey has a higher three-point percentage, and we've seen him have those big, explosive, memorable games. And he's playing on a team that has a lot of attention on it in the Philadelphia 76ers with championship aspirations, but he's also playing next to an MVP. De'Aaron Fox is not. He's playing next to a damn good player in DeMontis Sabonis, but somehow that's held against both him and Sabonis. But for Tyrese Maxey, that's not held against him playing alongside Joel Embiid. I would take De'Aaron Fox over Tyrese Maxey easily, but I understand the hype around Tyrese because of the games that Maxey's had recently. Then there's John Moran. If if John Moran is better than De'Aaron Fox, it's so unbelievably marginal. Like, this could be 50-50 for me, truth be told. It really could be 50-50 for me. Fox is the more efficient and effective scorer. In terms of points per game over the last couple of seasons, John Morant is like half a point per game better than De'Aaron Fox is. Now, Morant has more assists per game, more rebounds per game, so he fills up the stat sheet more in other ways. De'Aaron Fox is a better overall on-ball defender than John Morant is. But again, John Morant has the benefit of the big performances in the playoffs, actually winning a playoff series, those big dunks, those flashy highlights, being more of a household name because of the moments that he's had in comparison to De'Aaron Fox. I'll also say this too. Who's more reliable between the two players? De'Aaron Fox or John Morant? De'Aaron Fox, right? De'Aaron Fox hasn't done stupid things online to get himself suspended and, and to hold his team back. I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry to go there in an argument about basketball, but ultimately you're, you're judged on the basketball you play when you're able to play. We'll see what the Grizzlies look like this year now with, in theory, a full season again of John Morant. Hope he doesn't get hurt. Hope he stays out of trouble. And we can see these two point guards, two of the best and most exciting point guards in the league, go at each other again like they did early on in their careers. Because I think the Sacramento Kings are a better team than the Memphis Grizzlies. And I think De'Aaron Fox is a better player than John Morant is at this point. Finally, this one I, I kind of understand, even if I disagree with it. One spot ahead of De'Aaron Fox on the rankings is Damian Lillard. He's number eight. This is completely a right legacy rank. This is not a current rank. De'Aaron Fox is currently a better player than Dame Lillard is. Dame has big moments. Dame can certainly go explosive. The Sacramento Kings felt that with his game winner uh, with the Milwaukee Bucks last season, right? Dame is still an unbelievably talented, gifted player that on a playoff stage can absolutely still do some big things. But this is a legacy vote. In terms of who the better overall basketball player is at this point in time, I'm picking De'Aaron Fox over Dame. But I understand that in terms of like the average NBA viewer, I'm in the minority there. So I understand that ranking. All these rankings ultimately feed into another major point that I want to make about De'Aaron Fox. That's reaching an undeniable status for the Kings this season. I'll break down what that means here in just a second. Before that, though, like I said at the top of the show, today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel over the years here on Locked on Kings. They've been an amazing sponsor, and they're America's number one sportsbook for a reason. But right now, they got something a little different for you. From now until September 22nd, all FanDuel customers, doesn't matter if you're new, reoccurring, whatever, if you are a FanDuel customer and you bet $5 on anything, you will get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And you're not just paying five bucks to get this trial. You can bet $5 on anything. You win that bet, you're in the green, and you get a three-month free trial, or sorry, excuse me, three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket. You can, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel anytime. Take advantage of this offer and have some fun on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Undeniable status. This is what I feel De'Aaron Fox has to accomplish 
this season. In the eyes of the average NBA fan, in the eyes of the national NBA media membership, in the eyes of basketball, De'Aaron Fox has to become undeniable. Now, what does that mean? Define undeniable, Matt. Okay, well, undeniable to me means that no ifs, ands, or buts about it, no hesitation, he is viewed amongst the elite the best in the NBA. When the Kings get a national TV game, you'll hear comment you'll hear commentators talk about man De'Aaron Fox. That's such an elite. He's such an elite talent. He has such an unbelievable innate ability. But I think the casual common NBA fan just views De'Aaron Fox as a really really good exciting scoring guard. But a good, good, he, he's a good player on a good, defined basketball team. I, 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 from talking to people and from understanding, reading about De'Aaron Fox, seeing the conversations about De'Aaron Fox online, I think the majority of casual or national NBA fans or fans outside of Sacramento look at De'Aaron Fox as a really good basketball player, but they would not, like in these rankings, put him on the same level as a Jalen Brunson or a Shea Gilgis Alexander or these other top guards that skill wise and ability wise, he's on the same level as that's that undeniable status that I'm talking about he is 100% the best player on his team he's the best player on a successful team he gets back to a playoff stage and on that playoff stage continues to shine the way he was uh, he was in the playoff series against the Golden State Warriors before he broke his finger and he just needs to become in the eyes of everyone just one of those one of those dudes that you tune in to watch because something special can happen at any moment. Those of us who have been watching De'Aaron Fox throughout his entire career know that he provides a lot of that on a relatively nightly basis, right? We've had the privilege of being able to watch and follow De'Aaron Fox's entire career here in Sacramento, and we know he's been doing great things even far before the Sacramento Kings finally ended their playoff drought. But I still think he has not achieved that status yet in the NBA when he is more than capable of doing so. You know, I think back to not the end of this past season that just wrapped up, but the end of the season before that in Mike Brown's end of season press conference, essentially like his exit interview. He was asked about De'Aaron Fox, and he talked about how De'Aaron Fox has all the capabilities of being an absolute superstar in this league, and he would know because Mike Brown has coached Kobe Bryant, Mike Brown has coached LeBron James, Mike Brown has worked with Steph Curry, right? Like, Mike knows superstardom in the NBA. He says, De'Aaron Fox has all the capability. He just needs to do it every night. He just needs to be that guy every single night. I think it goes before that, or beyond that. He needs to be that guy every single night in the eyes of the casual NBA viewer, in the eyes of just the basketball fan. Basketball fans tune in to watch Luka Doncic play. Even if they're not Luka fans or Dallas Mavericks fans, they tune in to watch how Luka Doncic plays basketball. Now we're talking MVP and Hall of Famer in Luka Doncic. Do I think Luka's a better overall player than De'Aaron Fox is? Yes, he is. Right, I mean, let, let's let's be real here. Do I think De'Aaron Fox can absolutely beat Luca on a nightly basis if they were to play a playoff series? Could De'Aaron Fox outperform Luca and the Kings win a series? One hundred percent, I do believe he can. But again, Jalen Brunson, Shea Gilgis Alexander, great examples in the eyes of the casual fan because of the success that both those teams had, especially last season. Those guys are looked at in this elite tier of point guards and. The casual NBA fan is tuning in to see what Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to do. It's tuning in to see what Jalen Brunson is going to do. I just don't think they are, the majority of them are not there yet with De'Aaron Fox, and they absolutely need to be. Reaching undeniable status accomplishes two goals in my mind for the Sacramento Kings. One, De'Aaron Fox makes an all NBA team again and gets his Supermax. And number two, the Kings win their 50-plus games that they need to win this season to cement themselves as a playoff team in the Western Conference. So what does undeniable look like for De'Aaron Fox, right? How does he reach that undeniable status? Well, I think scoring has it's right at the, the, the center of it. I think De'Aaron Fox has to be around a 30-point-per-game score. That's a decent jump from the 27 that he's averaging. Three points per game jump is pretty significant, especially when you just added DeMar DeRozan to your team, right? 
But De'Aaron Fox, I think, needs to be a around 30-point-per-game scorer like he was at the start of last season. And you remember the attention that he was getting at the start of last season when he was scoring amongst the best in the NBA? Fox needs to be able to do that for a whole year. I think he needs to step up and continue to step up in the biggest moments, right? We're talking the clutch player of the year status that he won a couple of years ago. We know De'Aaron lives for those moments, so hopefully he will continue to do that. And he especially needs to do that and outperform the other top guards and stars on a regular basis. When the Kings play the New York Knicks, De'Aaron Fox needs to outperform Jalen Brunson. When the Kings play the Memphis Grizzlies, De'Aaron Fox needs to outperform John Morant. Hanging with them and the Kings losing, unfortunately, is not going to do it for him. Hanging with them and the Kings winning might do something for him. But if he can outperform those players and prove through victory and through numbers that he is on the same level and on that night was on an even higher level than those players, and he does that consistently to where people can't just roll their eyes and go, oh, it's a one-time thing. Oh, it's a one-time thing. This player had a bad night compared to De'Aaron Fox. No. Fox needs to consistently outperform these guys and hopefully outperform them on winning teams. And here's the thing. De'Aaron doesn't have to be selfish to become undeniable. He does what he needs to do. He needs to separate himself from Sabonis and DeRozan. That sounds negative. I promise you it's not. There are still people that question whether or not De'Aaron Fox or DeMontis Sabonis are the best player on the Sacramento Kings. Sabonis is a back-to-back all-NBA player. De'Aaron Fox... Did not make an All-NBA team last year. DeMontis Sabonis led the league in triple-doubles, led the league in double-doubles. Statistically, had a monster year, second only to Nikola Jokic. De'Aaron Fox is in the mix, statistically, with many of the other top guards in the NBA. There are many that believe that just based off the numbers and box score watching, and you got to understand, a lot of casual NBA fans, casual NBA viewers, will look at a box score more than the game itself, especially a Sacramento Kings game. A lot of them can question whether or not Fox or Sabonis are the best player on this Kings team. Fox needs to separate himself from that. Same thing with DeMar DeRozan coming over, right? This is De'Aaron Fox's team. We know it here in Sacramento. We need everybody else to know that and to see it too. Because we know, come fourth quarter time, Sabonis is going to defer to De'Aaron. Sabonis has said it in press conferences. He said, like, I I tell De'Aaron Fox, you tell me where to go. You tell me what to do in the fourth quarter. So Sabonis already defers to Fox. Sabonis already tries to support Fox as the leader and the star and the head of the snake on this Kings team. But does everybody else know that? Fox needs to prove that through his actions and through his play on the floor. And I think naturally Sabonis and DeRozan will help Fox do that. Because of the attention that they draw and how good of basketball players that they are, they will make it easier on De'Aaron Fox and vice versa De'Aaron Fox will make it easier on them because there is a world, there is a scenario where defenses are more concerned about De'Aaron Fox over DeMar DeRozan for the first time in DeMar's career that DeMar is not the number one guy and DeMar will get the easier looks and the better looks. Or De'Aaron Fox will play with another guard or wing scorer in DeRozan who will draw attention away from De'Aaron to where he can get some looks that he's not normally getting on a nightly basis undeniable status is what's keeping him, or not reaching that undeniable status is what's keeping him lower on this list. If De'Aaron Fox was in the same undeniable status as Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Jalen Brunson are, again, their numbers are not vastly different at all. If Fox was in that undeniable status, he'd be right up there in the top three, top four, top five with them. I promise you. Switch De'Aaron Fox with Tyrese Maxey. Have Fox doing what he's doing in Philadelphia with the 76ers. He's ranked higher than ninth. Switch De'Aaron Fox with Jalen Brunson. Do I think Fox would have had as good of a playoff performance in New York as Jalen Brunson did? I don't know. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to Jalen because he's an unbelievable player. But I think De'Aaron Fox, from what we've seen in the playoffs in Sacramento, if he performed on that stage the same way, or got the opportunity to perform the same way, I think he would show that he's the same caliber of player. Undeniable status is what's keeping De'Aaron Fox out of that top-tier conversation of point guards and ultimately what's holding him back from an all-NBA team and that Supermax contract. Today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Over the years, I've loved the opportunity to talk about BetterHelp. I've loved the opportunity to talk about mental health. It's so unbelievably 
important and I love that it is more in the limelight and is more talked about and has light shed upon it more than it has ever before, right? And this is not just in a podcast space or in just the general medical space. We're talking about in professional sports as well, right? The amount of mental health opportunities and the attention to the mental health of players and athletes and coaches around professional basketball, around professional sports, period. It's awesome to see. Your mental health is so unbelievably important. And and in the past, like myself, I'm sure you've let it slip, right? Or you've not paid as much attention to it. Maybe you go to the gym and work on yourself physically, but mentally, you need to be putting in the same work, right? You wouldn't skip leg day at the gym, so don't skip your mental health. If you're considering therapy, and I highly encourage you to do so because I, I've seen my therapist for the last like four or five years now, and it's totally changed my life. If you're thinking about starting therapy, it can be a little intimidating. Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch your therapist at any time for no additional charge. That's important because you ultimately have to create a bond of trust with your therapist. Rediscover your curiosity and take care of yourself mentally with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash NBA. I'm a little bit late to this, but I don't know if you saw. I think our uh, our good friend Mike Bibby, who, by the way, is one of my favorite basketball players, period, of all time. I don't know if I've ever shared this. Like, I grew up, I should find pictures because I know I have pictures. I grew up, like, Mike Bibby was my favorite player, period. Right, so much so that, like, I talked my uncle one time into taking me to the barber shop and letting me get my head buzzed completely without my mom knowing, so that I could look like Mike Bibby. Like, I, I adored uh, Mike Bibby growing up. Still, just love that man. Love the player. Um, he might have done us a little bit of a favor. I don't think he meant to do it. I don't think he was supposed to do it. There was an Instagram post that Mike posted of him in a full head to toe. Old school, purple from the early 2000s, King's jersey with the classic Sacramento across the chest. And the caption was like, put me in coach, I'm ready or something like that. I'm ready to, ready to go or whatever. But what drew people's attention, number one, was this post was quickly taken down after he posted it. Number two is, if you look at the picture, and you can easily find it, it's on my Twitter too, at Matt George Sack, you'll see... There's a Nike symbol down on the shorts. Well, as we know, Nike is the now primary sponsor. They've been the primary sponsor of NBA jerseys and NBA gear for the last couple of years. Since Nike took over, that's when we started getting the city editions, new jerseys every single year, right? So what everybody thinks happened is that Mike Bibby just leaked what the Kings City Edition jersey is going to be for this season. And I'm telling you right now, if the Kings City Edition jerseys this year are those early 2000s purple throwbacks that the Kings were wearing when they were pushing for championships with C-Webb and Bibby and Doug Christie and Peja Stoyakovich, if those are the jerseys, those suckers are going to sell out quick. I love those jerseys. You might, over the years, you might have heard me act like an old man get off my lawn here on Locked on Kings because I I don't like that the Kings seem to be trying to brand themselves further and further away from the purple, right? One, purple is my favorite color. It's my favorite color because I grew up a fan of the Sacramento Kings. The Kings colors are purple, purple and black. Those are the Kings colors, right? And and we've seen so much light blue and royal blue and red and, and all the classic Royals colors and Kings colors of years before. I don't care. The Kings are purple and black. They're jerseys in the early 2000s. NBA logos and jerseys, jerseys in the late 90s, early 2000s period were way better than where they're at now. Go and look at a comparison of NBA logos from the early 2000s to what all the logos are now. Pretty much all of them are way more dumbed down, way more boring, including the Kings logo. Bring back the old Kings court, and I hope they do a city edition court to match the jerseys. It's basically a throwback court from the Arco Arena playoff days. Bring back the old freaking logo because it's amazing. Bring back those city edition jerseys, man. If those purple jerseys are a thing, I cannot wait 
to go and get my hands on a Fox or DeRozan or Sabonis or Keegan Murray jersey that looks like that. Oh, I'm so excited. So I hope that this is indeed a leak. I hope that those are the City Edition jerseys. I really hope that Mike Bibby uh, did us a a favor there. All right, I want to hear your thoughts on where De'Aaron Fox is ranked in these point guard rankings. want to hear your thoughts on De'Aaron Fox's undeniable status. We're also going to be breaking down the rankings of where Demonta Sabonis falls in terms of NBA center rankings. Where does Keegan Murray fall? Where does uh, uh, Malik Monk fall, right? Where does DeMar DeRozan fall in terms of small forwards? So we're going to go through a lot of these rankings over the next few days and over the next week here on the Locked on Kings podcast. So I hope you'll continue to join in and uh, and enjoy that with me. Again, I'm, I'm expecting all of these rankings, these players, to be a little bit lower than they should simply because they play in Sacramento. I'm not ready for the DeMontis Sabonis episode. I've already looked at the rankings. The DeMontis Sabonis center rankings are going to piss me the hell off right? Because Sabonis is criminally underrated. He continues to be underrated somehow, even with the numbers and the production that he puts up. And once again, this list is probably going to show that. So stay tuned. If you want, if you like pissed off, angry Matt George, stay tuned for that episode. I promise you, it's, I'm, I'm not going to be a happy camper in that one, but I am interested to see, Hey, where does Keegan end up? Where does Malik end up? Where did DeMar, DeMar DeRozan end up? We'll look at all of those as we get another week closer to the start of training camp, the start of the King season. We got NFL season that's officially kicked off, so there's that to hold us over. But again, I want to hear your thoughts on uh, De'Aaron Fox, where he's ranked on this Hoops Hype rankings, where you would put him, and your thoughts on the undeniable status. Has De'Aaron Fox reached it yet, and just everybody's late to it, or does he still have more to do to get there? Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Appreciate your support here on the Locked on Kings podcast as always. Until next time, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to Locked on Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.